Hello again. This is the third part of this series examining the dates given within the Bible specific to the Exodus from Egypt. I thought I was done at two videos, but here I am with a third one. In all my videos, I give the invitation that if anyone would like to respond and give evidence against anything that I have said, I would like to hear it. I don't claim that I have all the answers. But I do feel confident enough with what I have researched when I put these presentations out there. If there is something I have overlooked or have gotten wrong, then I gladly investigate and make a correction. Well, since I released part two, I have heard back from two people who claim I have made some errors. First is that I said Rebecca was Jacob's wife. I did misspeak. Of course, Rachel was the name that I meant. Rebecca was Isaac's wife and Jacob's mother. The second person raised a potentially more serious problem. He claimed that my entire timeline of dates was based on a faulty assumption and couldn't possibly be correct. He included evidence, evidence straight from the Bible. It's found in Acts 13, 17 to 20. Here, Paul is in Antioch and is speaking to fellow Jews in the synagogue. The God of this people of Israel chose our fathers and exalted the people when they dwelt as strangers in the land of Egypt, and with an high arm brought he them out of it. And about the time of forty years suffered he their manners in the wilderness. And when he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he divided their land to them by lot. And after that, he gave unto them judges about the space of 450 years until Samuel the prophet. The fellow pointed out the problem with my timeline. I had stated that there were 435 years between the year of the Exodus and the first year of King David's reign. But in this passage, in the King James Version, there is a period of 450 years from when the Israelites divided the Promised Land until the time of Samuel the prophet. And that didn't yet include the reign of King Saul. So the 435 years cannot possibly be right, and therefore my date for the Exodus is wrong. And actually all my dates are wrong. Well, I verified the passage, and it looked like he was correct. It seems I have overlooked something, and the entire timeline did not work out as I had thought. I must admit, I was confused. There were so many other dates and evidences that I had researched. They all overlapped and seemed to build an interconnected web which were consistent with each other. How could I have gotten it wrong? All throughout my research, I have never based any claim on a single source. Even though I'm dealing with biblical facts, it's just not as simple as pointing to a verse in an English language translation and assuming that is the end of the matter. There are multiple translations. There are multiple Greek manuscripts. There are even multiple claims of which was actually the original language of the New Testament. And with this supposed error, We'll get to see how all of those come into play. The main sticking point occurs in verse 20. That 450 years time of the judges until Samuel seems like a slam dunk. One of the great things in our modern age of the internet is all the fantastic tools which are available to use for studying the Bible. One of the first things I do is to check the Greek manuscripts of the verse in question. Here is the Textus Receptus, the Greek that the King James is based on. Do you notice anything? Here, I'll put up the verse in the King James again. Notice that the Greek states, after that about 450 years, and then he gave it the judges. The that is actually in plural form and should be these, or these things. It is referring to the list of events that were stated in the previous verse, 
and it is not connected to the single event of giving judges. That's quite the big difference in meaning. There are other Greek manuscripts of the New Testament that have been discovered since. They have been examined and combined into a version that newer Bibles are translated from. Let's look at what the morphological Greek New Testament has for verses 19 and 20. What do you notice here? The 450 years are placed in verse 19 and are specifically connected to the events in the previous verses. In verse 20, after these things, and he gave them judges. There is no time period stated for the period of the judges. So what should we make of this? There are a few other English versions which match the King James Version reading. Obviously the New King James Version, but also Young's Literal Translation and Webster's Bible. These are all based on the Textus Receptus. However, they do not follow the Greek text, but parrot how the King James Version translators chose to render the text, which said, says that the 450 years was the period of the judges. The translations over the past century all connect the 450 years with the events Paul lists starting in verse 17 through verse 19. Translations such as the ESV, NIV, NASB, New English Bible, and the latest translation, the Legacy Standard Bible. With so many people holding the King James Version in high regard and basing their theology on its contents, there are a lot of people who probably do not know that this verse doesn't reflect the Greek manuscript that it is based on. Only the more modern translations give an accurate rendering of the Greek text. There are those who claim, after much study, that the New Testament wasn't actually first written in Greek, but was written in Aramaic, the lingua franca of the Middle East of that time period. It's too big a topic to delve into here, but I do want to show how the Aramaic Peshitta reads. The Aramaic and Hebrew languages do not contain capital letters, neither do they contain punctuation. It's just one long string of words. There are periodic section breaks, but there are no verse markings. Sentences are very often started with the word and and signal a new thought. Notice that there is no use of the word and anywhere in this text. So if the Greek was indeed a translation of the Aramaic, the inclusion of the word and in the Greek was their best guess based on their reading of the context. Here, the entire 450 years is sandwiched between the event of giving the, giving the land as an inheritance and the giving of the judges. It is obviously confusing, but since there is no and, there is no break in thought. And it does make sense that the 450 years describe the previous events. So again, if the Greek was the translation from this Aramaic original, the translators decided to add the phrase, these things, to make it more clear that the time periods described previous events. The two Greek versions and the Aramaic both seem to state that the 450 years describe the events listed in verses 17 to 19, and not the period of the judges until Samuel. But can we be sure of this? Let's assume for now that this is what the text is saying. What are the events that Paul lists? If we can determine a starting point and an end point, we can possibly determine the time period between them see if it really works out to about 450 years. Paul lists the following events starting with verse 17. The God of Israel chose the fathers of the nation. He made a great nation of them while in Egypt. God led them out of Egypt victoriously. He put up with them for 40 years in the wilderness. The nation destroyed seven other nations in the promised land. 
And finally, God gave them this land as a possession. The starting event is when God chose the fathers of Israel. The list ends when the people possessed the promised land. Exactly when did the nation of Israel possess the land? This is found in Joshua 14, starting in verse 1. These are the inheritances that the people of Israel received in the land of Canaan, which Eleazar the priest and Joshua the son of Nun and the heads of the fathers' houses of the tribes of the people of Israel gave them to inherit. Continuing on in verse 10. And now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive, just as he said, these forty-five years since the time that the Lord spoke this word to Moses, while Israel walked in the wilderness. And now, behold, I am this day eighty-five years old. The land was apportioned forty-five years after the spying of the land of Canaan, which was later in the same year as the exodus from Egypt. If, as I have shown in the last presentation, the exodus occurred in 1457 BC, then 45 years later is 1412 BC. That being the case, then according to our thesis, about 450 years previous should be the first event in the list, that is, when God chose the fathers of Israel. We take 1412 BC and subtract 14. 450 years, and that lands us in 1862 BC. Using the information about events and dates in the Bible, 450, 450 years previous is when God makes a covenant with Abraham and promises the birth of Isaac. He is literally the father of Israel, as his son Jacob is later renamed. This is within the year 1863 to 1862 BC. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless, that I may make my covenant between me and you and may multiply you greatly. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, Behold, my covenant is with you. And you shall be the father of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the father of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make you into nations, and kings shall come from you. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant. Be God to you and to your offspring after you. And I will give to you and to your offspring after you the land of your sojournings, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession. I will be their God. God promises that there will be a great nation from Abraham's offspring. Here, God specifically chooses Isaac to make his covenant with, not Ishmael and not with any of the other of Abraham's children. So, the 450 years between the starting and ending event does work out. We can verify this further. Abraham was 99 years old when the promise of Isaac was given. God's first covenant with Abraham was when he was 75 years old, when he first entered the land of Canaan. Find this in Genesis 12. That was 24 years previous. So if we take 1863 BC, and subtract 24 years, we land in 1887 BC. As I showed in the last presentation, God's first covenant with Abraham occurred in 1887 BC. Exodus 12 verse 40 says that 430 years later, the exodus from Egypt occurred. So if we take 1887 BC and add 430 years, and that lands us in 1457 BC as the exodus from Egypt. Add the further 45 years mentioned in Joshua, and as we've seen, that is 1412 BC. So we see that all these dates within the Bible are actually consistent with each other. 
the 450 years that Paul states must be referring to these events. The information all works out. And that means the translators of the King James Version got it wrong in Acts 13. The more modern translations are more correct in this case. As a result, this is another confirmation that the Exodus date of 1457 BC, one that I did not include in my previous presentation. So a supposed error turns out not to be an error after all. And it's actually a great proof that the Bible is accurate in all the historical information that it contains.